Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera here with a video for you today. This is a rather serious video, about as serious as I can uh, uh, think about in terms of giving you advice about homesteading. I did a video called The Dirty Truth, and you may have seen that. Uh, it's one of the videos we did back in the fall, and it discusses some of the realism in homesteading and things that we're finding out, things that are truthful, and that thing, you know, in terms of how things are, okay? A lot of folks get a lot of romantic I thoughts and ideas and passions and dreams about farming and homesteading and living in the country and living, the, you know, leaving the city behind and all that. And all of those things are true, okay? No doubt about it. Um, but there are some realities that you need to know about. We've talked about that in several other videos, life and death, how much work there is, how dirty things really are and that you have to tend to a lot. A lot of you know this, okay? Um, but a, a, another subject that I want to talk about, and actually the reason I'm, I'm talking about it is not only because a lot of homesteaders discuss it very often, but also because I get a lot of questions about it. I kind of held off talking about it because I just want to make sure that I'm giving you the right advice. And the thing is, is that when you, especially if you decide to leave city life, suburban life, and you decide to start homesteading, okay? I don't mean grow a tomato plant, whatnot in your backyard. I mean, if you really decided, okay, we're going to take this, you know, we're going to uproot, we're, we're going to, we're really going to go forth with this as a lifestyle. Um, we might or might not homeschool. We're going to really change the scenery. We're going to get into animals and we're going to get into agriculture and we're going to try to learn a lot of skills and be self-reliant. Um, even though there's a, there's a huge movement for this, and that's a good thing, okay? Um, you're going to find that there is criticism with it. For a lot of you, you're going speak it girl I mean because <laughs> if you get in a circle of homesteaders whether they are old homesteaders um, whether they are newcomers like me this is actually a subject we discuss quite a bit now the old school homesteaders they don't care this is their life <laughs> they've lived it and you know this is what they're doing regardless the new breed of homesteaders, while we have the same attitude, I think it probably bothers us a little bit more, simply because I can only speak from my own personal experience. When I, when we decided to really get into this, because we felt like a life change, okay? It built and built and built, and we felt, the best way I know to describe it is almost like a spiritual awakening or an enlightenment. You know, you finally go, what was I here? What am I here to do? What am I here to serve? And what am, what's my purpose? Not everybody's on board with that. Okay, they don't jive with it. So there's a lot of funny videos on YouTube, and I love them. And they jest and make fun of this whole thing that I'm talking about. But the reality is, is depending on where your criticism is coming from, it can be hurtful. I mean, let's face it. Some of you can sit there and say, I don't care what so-and-so says. And fundamentally, you shouldn't. The basic advice is don't. But we're human and things bother us to some degree. And sometimes criticism can come from the most strange and unlikely and personable places. So I'm not going to dive into necessarily where you're going to get criticism from because I don't know. I know that we have had some from individuals in our lives because they don't understand our lifestyle. They don't. They didn't grow up with it, they don't understand it, and they see this as why would you want to go and leave all the comforts of a suburban life, Target's down here, Starbucks is over there, you put your kids in public school, you know, you have the day to yourself, uh, why would you want to milk a cow, we can go on and on. Um, to them, this is a burden. And so, and so that, that, you know, on days, there's days that's bothered me, okay? Um, but let me tell you why you really need to focus, not focus on that and focus on what you're doing. You simply do not have the time. That's another thing they don't understand. But, you know, you really, like, for example, once every couple of weeks we pack up and we go and we go to a bigger town, city, whatever, and we shop or run errands or visit somebody or we sell our eggs or whatever we're doing. And it is overwhelming. It's a little overwhelming to go back at times, but it's overwhelming to come back because we're not going to come home, you know, go and shop and do and be for six to eight hours or whatever for the day and come home and 
pull the car in and go inside and turn on the television and sit around the rest of the evening and relax. That does not exist in our world. It will not exist in your world. And so I want to express to you that if you are dealing with individuals or things that are a distraction, I highly encourage you to minimize them. I know you can't eliminate everything in your life. You can't you know, eliminate all the people and negative influences. I hope, well, but you know what I mean. Um, but you have to learn to adjust and you know, really recognize where that negativity is coming from because you're going you're gonna to get it. And, um, it, you know, I, I, there's some folks up here that have moved, and I'm telling you, you want to talk about some serious off-grid homesteading. There's nothing they can't do. And they, they adjusted 20 years ago or more, and they left the city, and they came. And you wouldn't believe the stories that they tell. You know, you, we sort of think that it's sort of like when you have this wonderful experience and you change, because we love this, okay, that everybody is going to clap and be, you know, behind you. That's not going to be fully the case. Um, most people, 90, 95% of people we know or, or family or whatever, they are. They love, they think it's funny or they're proud of us. I think some of them were skeptical that we could do what we're doing. And I think that they're, you know, really pleased to see how well things are coming along. And so it does evolve with a lot of people. I think a lot of folks are just scared of change. I think some folks are scared to recognize maybe what they should be doing and maybe you're bringing that forth with them and they're trying to push it off. I don't know. This is, you know, there's a lot of different reasons, but all I can tell you is I want you to recognize that if you're transitioning from particularly suburban to extremely rural, okay? When I say really rural, I mean there's no stoplights out here. There's no convenience stores out here. Walmart is 30 something miles away. I mean, you know, we have to really make effort to do what a lot of folks, it can take them five or ten minutes to get to. And it's an effort because not only that, you know, we have to prep things before we leave and make sure this has that and she's been watered. You know, life is very different and very busy and, and constant work. That's what homesteading is about. Um, so I just wanted to, I hope this kind of reaches out and expresses what I mean because this is a very common subject. Um, and it is a common question um, that I talk out with people. And, you know, you just <clears throat> focus on what you're doing and, you know, remind folks, hey, with, remind them with grace. This is our calling. This is what we want to do. I think over time, a lot of these people will be very proud of you and jump on board in terms of supporting you or helping understand. Um, and for the, those that don't, minimize your distractions. And, and minimize distractions, you know, in general. Because... Like I said, when you come home and, and you you pull back away from suburban and city life and busyness and stoplights and stores everywhere and all this stuff and hustle bustle and buying this and buying that and you come home, you've got a dairy cow to milk. You've got a hundred chickens to feed. You need to go pull weeds in the garden. You've got bread to prep. You've got to hang laundry on the line. You've got, I mean, we could go over endless chores. So I hope this is uh, what you're looking for and it's an encouragement, um, but it is a dirty truth. And uh, I hope that this helps you uh, recognize that everybody is experiencing it and that it's okay. It's part of human nature and just to go forth with what you're doing because, you know, if you're doing what you really believe in and you go about it the right way within the steps, you're going to succeed. So we hope you like us here at, uh, you know, what you're seeing here at Appalachia's Homestead. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe. Make sure to like us on Facebook and Instagram and our blog and continue to send in all your questions. And this is more of a heavy subject. You know, this is not showing you specifically something special like our cute little cow over here and how we milk, but it is an important subject because what I find, and even my husband and all of us here, there is a major emotional and emotional attachment and pride, and uh, you, you know, it's something you take very serious, and in a lot of times, in a lot of ways, learning skills is a life or death situation for folks, so serious, so hope this helped you out, we'll talk to you all soon, and you just press forth, y'all take care.